Hey there, YouTube. Barn North Racing here. So here is the Fusion 360 simulation of the perimeter cutout move that I was using on the Drink a Clock product that I made this summer. And one of the things that I noticed as I was making all these clocks was that whenever I had these sort of fast perimeter moves that, you know, on a circle, so it's moving both in the X and the Y simultaneously, that I was getting a, a hesitation or a judder or a chatter, especially as it moved around from the 9 o'clock here up to the 12 o'clock position here. It was really sort of exaggerated. So I went looking for slop or play in the machine and everything was okay. All the V wheels were tight. Um, all the belts were tight. There was no loose parts anywhere. So clearly this is a result of flex or uh, a loss of rigidity in the machine. So I went looking for a product that could maybe address this and I found something. And today we're gonna install it and we're gonna test it and see if it really does what it's supposed to do. So let's go have a look. So this here is the part that we hope will eliminate about a third of the lateral motion inside the spindle here. And the way it does that is this part here, which is a CNC for newbies replacement Z-axis, it bolts onto the spindle carriage and replaces the original one which has V-wheels locating the motion, the one that uses these ground linear slides, which are the gold standard when it comes to CNC motion control. These precision slides here and here have these ball bearing trucks that slide along them and they are very much better than the V-wheels in resisting twisting motion like this and lateral movement like this because the V-wheels are cantilevered out and they can flex like that. This replaces it with something that's about a third of its height and this is steel on steel. There's just a lot less opportunity for flex. It doesn't remove all of it because there's still V-wheels in the carriage mount here along the, the X slide and there's still stuff in the Y carriage, but given the amount of cantilever that's on the spindle, we think this is probably going to take out most of it. Uh, basically, the mount it has a base plate that mounts the original spindle. It's got its slide here the spindle bolts to. It's got an integrated motor mount up here and a limit switch in here as well. The one sort of downside to this system is that it now mounts the motor directly up here instead of over and down using the belt like the original one does, but there's plenty of room in my enclosure for clearance, so I'm, I'm not too worried about that. So, time to disassemble everything, bolt this on, and let's see what it does. So here's our test setup for measuring the lateral flex in the X-Carve spindle. What we've got is the spindle itself. We've got the laser cantilevered out here in front, which is great because it'll act as a movement amplifier because its center line is quite a bit displaced from the center line of the spindle. We've got a dial test indicator, a dial test indicator holder, and a steel plate clamped to the machine to keep everything stable. All I need to do is take my finger, push it on the side of the spindle, wiggle it like so, and we'll measure the displacement here on the dial test indicator. So let's give that a try and see how it works. So here we are with our dial test indicator up against the side of the laser. And what I'm going to do is take my finger, and I'm going to press against the side of the spindle and see how much it flexes. So here we go. And we can look at that. You don't even need the, the indicator to see the flex. You can see the actual laser head moving. So let's see if we can't fix that. So here we are, all assembled, ready to go. Assembly wasn't all that bad, except for wire extension. The wires on this are sized for the original carriage. Uh, the limit switches up quite a bit higher, so I had to extend the wires for that, and the kit doesn't provide any sort of extension. So there was a little bit of fabric cobbling going on there. Uh, other than that, though, very straightforward, very straightforward to tune. So we're all set up. We've got the laser back on. We've got our setup ready to check deflection. So let's go ahead and test it and see what we got. Okay, moment of truth. We'll just load the side of the spindle here. And look at that. We can get just up to about 10 thousandths. So we've more or less cut that in half. That's a small push there. It's only going about six or seven. So that has made a huge difference in the amount of deflection in the spindle in the machine. There is, of course, still lots left. It's still pretty springy. But any improvement is a good one, especially when you can take out as much as that has. It remains to be seen where the rest of the, of the springiness in the machine is. I'll go hunt that down later. But for now, I'm going to call this a success. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Ding, ding, around one. Ding, ding, around one. Now the battle's begun. Ding, ding, around two.